In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can use table constructors to create your own DAX tables in Power BI. We're going to talk about why use it in the first place and how you can get started with it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this video was actually inspired by an issue that I had recently with one of my clients. So the situation is this. They wanted to be able to update their data in their Power BI reports in the Power BI service. The problem is that they are very limited with what kind of access they have in the workspace or with the data sources that they might have. They wanted the ability to have an input sheet to update the data in Power BI, but they're not able to do so. They have not a lot of access when it comes to the workspace itself, so not being able to create uh, data flows. And since the data that my client wanted to update is actually pretty simple and pretty basic, we opted to using table constructors in DAX so that they can update the report and the data without actually touching the Power Query editor. So table constructors are really good at fulfilling these kinds of scenarios where you don't need existing data in your data model to start working with this. You don't need access to the Power Query editor to create new tables. And it's simple enough to edit and manage using the DAX query view. So let's start with an empty Power BI desktop report here to get started with creating a table constructor. So from here, we're going to go to table view, and then we're going to create a new table here, just so that we can see what the output is of our table. So I'm going to just call this my table. And to start a table constructor, you're going to use the curly brackets. So the open and closing uh, curly brackets. And then from here, we're going to add some values here. So let's add one, two, and three separated by commas. What this does is it creates a single column table that has three rows, one, two, and three. So the more values I add in this constructor, the more row value that I get in my single column table. If you surround this value now with a parenthesis like this, what you'll notice is that instead of creating these in rows, it creates them in columns. So one, two, and three. And if you want to add more rows in this table, you can simply just add more values in here using the same format that we have created here, separated by commas. So if I create a new line here, add a comma, and then paste another set of values here, and then we'll call it five, six, seven. It adds another row of data here based on what we've added here in the new parenthesis in our table constructor. Now, when you add new rows in your table constructor, it's really important to make sure that all of these new rows have the same number of columns, because if you don't, you will get an error. So for example, if I just remove seven here, you will get an error here saying that they must have the same number of columns. So uh, if we just ch change and remove this, number three here. So that means they both have the same number of columns, then the error disappears. If you want to skip a column, you can simply just add the comma to denote that there will be an empty value in there. So for example, if I just add or just bring back the values that we had here initially, and let's say we didn't want six here, we just simply delete six and remove the value here, but keep the comma. So what it will do is it will make sure that we still have the same number of columns in here, except that the middle one is empty. By default, table constructors do sampling on the data that you have to automatically change the data type of those columns based on the data that exists in those rows. So in our example that we've been working on so far, they've all been converted into a whole number value because they are number values. But as soon as we add something else here. Like, let's say, for example, we're going to call this one uh, carrots, and it's just going to be a text type form. As you can see, it changes that column into a text type uh, data format. So if you make sure that the same data type exists in the same column, the table constructor should automatically detect what that type is and change that type accordingly. If you're not happy with the data type that the table constructor set, you can also change those manually from the column tools ribbon, like you would in any other table. So for example, here, uh, if I select one column here, you can see that I can change the data type here from 
it will change the data type of that column like you would expect. Column names by default are named as values. So if you have just a one column table, it will just name it value. But if you have multiple columns in your table constructor, it will just suffix it with the number to just number uh, those new columns. And as far as I know, there is actually no way for you to change that explicitly on the DAX code itself. So you're not able to define what uh, that name is from the DAX here. However, since it's a table now, you can actually change them manually by simply double clicking uh, from the, the data view here and just uh, call this whatever you want. So product name, price, quantity, and when you add new values here, these uh, names will actually be kept and any new columns will obviously just have that default value uh, column name on them. If you want to explicitly define what the column names and the data types are from your DAX code itself, there's another function that you can use called data table and actually covered it in a separate video, along with other ways that you can create static tables in Power BI. So if you want to learn more about that option and those other options, go check out that video. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to get started with table constructors in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.